Dr. Yeah. Oz recently said, we got to stay upbeat because that's a huge part of immunity. Dr. Carter, I wanted to ask you about this coronavirus and it getting into the gut or being present in the gut. Yes, yeah, so apparently Dr. Corley, who's a gastroenterologist at Kaiser Permanente, which is a well-respected uh, large HMO uh, plan for uh, our population, has noted that the coronavirus is also found in the stool and using the exact same testing method of uh, saliva where we can identify the virus, he has noted that even when that sample, uh, based on the oral secretions, is negative, he found that it could still be positive in the stool. That's amazing. So, and the oral secretions are really testing for whether it's present in the respiratory tract, basically? Uh, primarily, primarily, yes. It may actually be starting in the gut is what this might imply? Well, yes. And, and again, you know, the gut being our, you know, 80% of our immune system is located in the gut. And the whole mucosal surfaces basically starts from your nose, your mouth, all the way down to the anus. So all of these areas are quite vulnerable to various pathogens and, of course, viruses included. But having those mucosal surfaces being protected by uh, the pyrus patches in the intestinal system and, and the other various uh, lymphatic uh, organs there can be first line defenders. But in situations where we have a decrease in good bacteria and the, the barriers in our oral mucosa, as well as the, um, the nasal mucosa and what have you, due to consuming, uh, for instance, packaged foods, being exposed to toxins and, and the like. Basically, all of those things um, compromise the integrity of the lining of, of all of those soft tissue structures that are, again, our primary defense against um, all types of pathogens. Interesting. So, Dr. Carter, earlier today, you sent me an article from the Cleveland Clinic, one of the most world famous clinics. And the title was Defining Dysbiosis for a Cluster of Chronic Diseases. Do you want to summarize for me what that means in terms of the gut and, and our health? Well, yeah, basically, dysbiosis is an imbalance of the good and bad bacteria in our gut. And all of us have hundreds of thousands of species of bacteria that are integral in um, preserving life. So when those are compromised, obviously the good bacteria are shut down by various pesticides or uh, toxins or, or antibiotics, what have you, and then the bad bacteria start to proliferate, then that is a precursor for uh, various chronic diseases that can rear their ugly heads in our, in our systems. Yeah, what this article says specifically that you sent, chronic diseases that include urinary stone disease, obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and kidney diseases, which often exist as comorbidities. Since you sent this, I looked at other articles, and they're even attributing cancer to gut dysbiosis. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, the gut is 80% of our immune system. So just think about it. If, if it's compromised in any way, and again, if we don't have an abundance of good bacteria, then uh, the, 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 the chronic diseases are going to become much more uh, prominent and preeminent in our bodies because we need our gut for overall health. And it is totally connected with uh, all of these diseases plus more, and especially in the, the gut-brain connection and how uh, having uh, an overgrowth of bad bacteria and parasites and viruses and, and what have you 
uh, markedly increase the risk for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia. And I think the connection between the gut, gut dysbiosis, and thyroid disease, and chronic fatigue syndrome, and uh, all the thyroiditis are related to that as well. I want to ask you uh, another question, just to sort of wrap it all together. So the CDC simply shows, let me give you the statistics, if I can find them quickly, is that who is at higher risk for coronavirus disease, you know, COVID-19, which is the disease, and they say older adults and people who have serious chronic medical conditions, heart disease, diabetes, lung disease. So does it make sense that there may be an opportunity for improving your odds against this disease by fixing the gut? What's your take on that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, in these days and times, um, everyone has some degree of what we call leaky gut. And in medical jargon, that's called hyperpermeability syndrome. And again, it's where the, the cells lining the uh, intestines is really only one cell layer thick. And when it's exposed to, uh, say, for instance, gluten or dairy, of today because of the hybridization of the wheat and the gluten content being 50 times higher than it used to be. And the milk, the casein, which is the protein part of that milk, um, is different from, again, 50 years ago. And that causes irritation of that lining and causes those junctions to open up. And then those molecules, which are now kind of foreign to the body, get out into the bloodstream. And the body, body's immune system basically says, what is this? This is not something that I recognize that I can use to, uh, you know, for building blocks, for running the machinery of the body. So, and, so it, there's a possibility then, with so many people having leaky gut, and we're finding this virus in the gut, that this may be a pathway for this virus into the rest of the body. We don't know for sure, but by inference from other diseases, it's a logical conclusion. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt, without a doubt. Let me ask you, I know you, um, you're not a gastroenterologist, but you're a functional medicine doctor. So you have solutions and programs to leaky gut, gut dysbiosis, and all that, you know, based on your vast knowledge, can you give our audience just some simple tips on where to start to start fixing, fixing their gut? Well, I mean, first and foremost is eating as organic as possible. And yes, of course, it is more expensive. And um, yeah, oftentimes it can be very difficult to truly eat 100% organic. And, um, and I don't eat 100% organic. Sure. Truth be told, but I'm very cognizant of what I do consume and really try to stay away from those things that are pretty obvious, like packaged foods um, and the like and fried foods, uh, especially in the vegetable oils and, and so forth. Those are all very toxic, ultimately. But, you know, again, consuming organic foods, taking... Uh, just a, a few supplements that can really help the health of the gut. Um, prebiotic fibers um, that are, you know, readily available in pill form. Obviously, if you can get it more from your diet with the, the vegetables, that's a better source. But um, also, we all need a, at least 50 grams of fiber in our diet. And most of us do not eat enough roughage to... Uh, get to that point. Processed so. foods, the whole thing about them is all the fibers essentially removed. So that's a big problem. What I'm going to yeah. do, Dr. Carter, is I'll leave a link at the end of this uh, video. So if people want to contact you and, and discuss their gut and maybe hire you to help them overcome anything. So what, what would be a symptom that someone can be aware of that could imply that they have what Cleveland Clinic calls, uh, you know, a dysbiosis of the gut. What are some of the major symptoms to be looking for? Well, um, pretty much anything gut-related, um, bloating, gas, um, 
abdominal cramping, diarrhea, constipation. And a key point on what constipation truly is, as most people really don't have the correct definition of that, one should be really having two to three bowel movements per day, not a week, um, which is very common, especially in the female population. But you really should be evacuating every time after you have a meal. So when that does not occur, it's just backing up toxins in the system. And again, when you have leaky gut, that just accelerates the process. So the body only has a certain capability of ridding itself of toxins. Um, but when one or more of the pathways is clogged up, i.e. being constipated, then those toxins that should have been eliminated just get recirculated back into the body. Dr. Carter, thank you very much. I think this is breaking news. I mean, we, as functional practitioners, we all know that the gut's a very important play in creating over health, overall good health, but little did we know that this viral infection can actually penetrate into the gut and be resonant in the gut. So I think obviously, Everybody should be taking measures to improve the overall health of the gut, and that may help reduce the, uh, the uh, efficacy and effect of this virus on, on their overall health. I appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thank you much. Thank you.